Then I got this Model 1's Dip Kit. Now, I know a lot of people would say, oh, that's old. That's been out for a while. But I ain't into all of that, okay? I ain't into all that. I got what was on sale. Not only that, I have never used a dip system. This will be my first time. So, this suits me just fine. Hey everyone, hey nail tubers. So this is the Model 1's dip kit and I'm using it on Yoko. For anyone new to my channel, Yoko is my practice hand. And this is my first time doing a dip system. So it comes in three steps. One, base coat. The second one is an activator. And the third one is a gel top coat. I chose this really cute blue. There's a brush for you to clean and brush off the excess powder and a nail file. While I'm examining the instructions, which turns out to be very easy by the way, I want to explain something. This was filmed a while back. As you can see, I had on those poly gel, the set that I did. My intention was to do a two week update on them, but in between time, I had gotten the stiletto display tips and ended up doing that eye snap series, which you really should check out. Not only that, I ended up going back to work. I've missed being here so much and doing videos and all, and I'm so glad to be here today. So after I double check for the contents, the only thing left to do is to get started. Initially, I was kind of apprehensive about using the dip system, it being my first time, but you know what? It actually is very easy. So the first thing is you go in with a layer of the base and you simply dip the nail. Gently shake off what is on top and then lightly brush off any excess powder. So you repeat this step for each nail which will allow drying time as you move along from one to the next. One of the very first things for you to note is if you're doing a long length, there's not enough deepness in the jar to cover the entire nail bed. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Just continue to move through your set and I'll show you something else that I did. In between each layer here I did a little bit of a cleanup to get up any of the excess powder that had fallen or spilled out onto the table. So as I started the second layer here I did something just a little bit different. I would lift the jar up and tilt it towards the nail so that it would cover the entire nail bed. I don't know why, but I noticed this as I was editing that while I was doing this second layer, I seemed like I might have been a little rushed. No need for that because you're not going to cure, it's going to dry naturally. The important thing is, is to try to get the powder on as smoothly to the surface as possible. 
Oh, and also, I was always shaking the jar to start out with a smooth surface before I did the dip. Since this was filmed quite some time ago, I can't specifically recall why I wasn't able to manage covering this entire nail bed, but eventually I switched to using a spoon to pour over the powder and fill in that area that was missed. So here, where I didn't get to that small patch of area, my plan was to apply some base coat there and then pour over with a spoon. But then I decided to just simply go over the entire nail, hoping that it will go on and create a smoother surface. So as I move through this third and final round of the base and the powder, something just came to mind. This was something that came from a fellow YouTuber and I believe it was Evie from Long Hair Pretty Nails. Her suggestion was before you brush off the excess powder to wait just a few seconds more and ensure yourself that it is totally dry. This could be something critical to creating a good set. I thought that was really, really good advice. Thanks so much, Evie. One of the things that I am noticing is that this color blue is looking much more translucent on the nails than it does in the actual jar. Um, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I still like this color very much so. So if anybody knows if this is the norm, please leave me a comment or let me know because this part I'm a little bit confused by. If I get dip system again, is this what it's going to look like? Because I was actually thinking it was going to look exactly like it does in the jar. So here I'm going in with my hand file to do some shaping at the free edge and on the side walls. There's not necessarily a suggestion to use the e-file, but as far as that surface, I'm thinking it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? I believe the only reason that I used the e-file was just to get some practice because I'm using Yoko today, my practice hand, and I need to get a little more used to it. So real quick while I'm doing this filing, I can only give you a verbal update on those poly gel nails. And you just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> so let me see, I had them on for about a little over a week before I did the eye snap series. Five of those videos I did in one sitting. So that was another day. Then this dip kit was done 
before I actually cut them down. I had actually cut them down before totally removing them. I couldn't do anything with this length at work and be functional. <laughs> so I want to say I probably had the set on for about a week and a half and there was no lifting or anything like that. So I'll be doing another set, of course, maybe with some designs or something like that. But I think it was pretty good. Basically, I start out on the sides just to smooth out the side walls and look, make that look a little more crisp. And then I begin to feel the surface out to see if I can tell if the barrel is laying flush to the surface. Now that you've done some filing and shaping of the nail bed, you really want to use some type of a buffer to smooth away some of the scratches that that may have created. It is suggested that you should move up in grid size. The higher you go, the smoother you're able to make the nail bed. We typically start out often with a 100-180 grit nail file, so your buffers should obviously be in the 200s or better when it comes to creating a smooth surface. Anytime I file or buff a nail bed or nail enhancement, I should say, I tend to use an alcohol product just to wipe it clean. One of the things that I just recently learned from Nail Nails, Kirsty Meekin, is she'll go back over it with acetone because acetone melts the enhancement a little bit and brings some smoothness to the surface as well. I might have to try that one day. So step three is the gel top coat and here I go in with two layers for a little extra shine. So this being my first time with a dip system, I think they came out pretty cute. I am so glad that I chose this color. The blue is just so summery and so refreshing looking, right? 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you liked the way that this turned out too. I do realize that there's going to be some adjustments that I will continue to make as I get accustomed to using dip powders. But overall, I like the way that this turned out. Well, that's it for today's video. I am really liking that blue, even though it looks different from in the jar. This is the Model 1's dip kit, and you'll see it in my Model 1's nail haul. The link for that video will be at the end of this one, and also in the description box. You guys just don't know how happy I am to have had some free time from work to make it here today, and to also see you here just as much. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment so I know you've been here, and for anyone new to my channel, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any uploads. I've gotten so many compliments from the iSnap series, so feel free to check that out. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video.